Hello, hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Always a fun word to say, right? Hump day, whatever you want to call it. Just getting the room started, getting it nice and comfy for everyone. Um, so happy to be having um, this event. Um, May. May is a jam-packed month. Um, those of you who are in the room, hi everyone, welcome. Um, let me know in the chat if you can hear me clearly. Do I need to turn my volume up? Are we good? I know the AC is kind of loud in the background, so just let me know if that's, that's sounding good on your end. Thumbs up if the sound's good. Going to set this up. Let me get Maritza over here. sound on my end over there. Can you hear me clearly? Just like hear me. I hear you loud and clear. Um just making sure I know the AC is a little loud. You know, home office things, right? <laughs> here, here. Just working home life. It's where we are. Okay, okay. We have people rolling in. Um, happy Wednesday, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Um, May, can you believe, like, we're already, we're here. Didn't we just say Happy New Year, like, last week? <laughs> it's, not, it's not great how, uh, how time works sometimes, but, you know, it rolls by when you're having a good time. Or when your rights are being taken away from you. That's About that. Mind your own uterus <laughs> is kind of my whole mood right now but uh that's neither here nor there yep. happy wednesday to you too everyone lovely lovely beautiful people oh my goodness i mean we could go get right into it right because <laughs> i'm feeling i'm feeling the love coming in the room so you know um welcome everyone um my name's natasha i'm the and marketing director for art. I'm hearing this weird flickering noise on my end. Do you hear it as well? Let me see. Do we still hear it? I think it might be on your end. Let me see. Say something again. Now I can't hear you at all. Uh oh. See your your lips, but don't hear anything. Let's see. Okay, try again. No. Is your mic on? Okay, you're gonna leave the room and try to come back. See if that might work. Let's see. I don't think it's me. Oh, it might be me. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness. Okay, hold on. Do we still hear it? Still hear it. I wonder what... Just muted and unmuted. Oh. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Let's stick to whatever this is. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird that it's doing that. Um, apologies, everyone, for the technical difficulty that is really annoying i have no oh they said we can hear you both now audience do you still hear a little flickering noise in the background if you can't hear it that's great give me a thumbs up if the sounds good or thumbs down if it sounds really weird even if 
they can, I think it's better than what happened before where no one could hear us. Okay, yeah. You know what? Mindfulness, which is what brings us here, right? (laughs) Um, Yeah, everyone, thank you for joining. Um, Here at Comfy Art, you know, we are an arts business incubator um, based in Atlanta, um, but we work with artists, brands, entrepreneurs all across the country. Um, and we really strive on supporting artists on sustaining their, their art as profession as work. We don't believe in the notion of starving artists. This is annoying. Hold on. Let me try. Let me see if maybe the ear box. Can everyone hear me? It's better? Better. They said it's better. Okay. Well, it, it must have been me and a mic issue. Thank you guys for being patient um, with me on that one. Um, so yeah, Comfy Art, doing all the things, um, connecting artists, businesses, brands together. Um, we're all about sustainability um, for profession, for arts, um, for artists, you know, paying artists their worth. Uh, We primarily work with a lot of artists of color. There's a great need for that visibility and support in the art space. Um, And we're just out here doing the work. And, you know, we wanted to honor May being Mental Health Awareness Month. And for us, this conversation is not just like a checklist, like, ooh, calendar of events. Um, We literally could not survive or thrive in the arts without being in tune to our mental health, um, our wellness um, as individuals, as creatives, but as a collective and a community as well. Um, And so we'll be kicking off this entire month every Wednesday with these midweek check-in moments, um, which we call our mindful moments. So every Wednesday at noon, Eastern Standard Time, we'll be right here on live on Comfy Art. Each week, we're going to be rolling out another speaker, another opportunity to talk about all the things that can get us centered, grounded as a collective. Um, And so today, we have the honor of speaking with the lovely Maritza. Maritza, share with the world who you are, what do you do, how dope you are. I know how dope she is, but share with everyone who you are and um, what's your practice? That means a lot to me coming from you. I am so glad that we were able to connect a couple of months ago. Project that uh, unfortunately didn't happen, but we've been able to spend some time celebrating. I am assistant curator at Perez Art Museum Miami. And so my practice consists of curating shows, writing, uh, participating in panel discussions, giving talks, uh, you know, you name it. But I think if you were to kind of boil it down to one thing, I would say it's storytelling, um, really in, in, in all of those different capacities. So it's quite an honor to be able to have that type of responsibility and to be able to speak on behalf of an institution as wonderful as PAM, uh, an institution that really lives and breathes its mission and vision, um, not only through its exhibition program, but through its education program. I mean, we're also so passionate and hearing you talk about comfy art you know it it kind of it resonates with me and our mission as well because what we want to do is also create a very nurturing space for artists for our community for people to come and feel like pam is really a sort of front porch for miami and that everyone can come and really just use art as a catalyst for conversation as a way for us to connect with each other use art to relate to one another, to understand one another. So um, I think in that sense, we have uh, quite quite a bit in common. Yes, and synergy, better together, right? Um, Miami and Atlanta specifically, which is where um, Comfy Arts is headquartered, um, are very rich cities, you know, rich in history, rich in culture. Um, depending on who you ask and where you ask, you know, what does Miami look and feel like? What does Atlanta look and feel like? Everyone might have a different answer. Um, But what is very, very obvious is that when it comes to art, music, fashion, all of those creative industries, 
there's definitely a voice, um, there's a history. And a lot of times the people that push and move that history and those stories are people of color. And we go back to talking about this whole idea of mental health and, and how does that look? You know, everyone's hashtag self-care Sundays and all the cool things. But when we really try to dive into what that looks like, how do we show up for ourselves as creatives? What are the spaces that we can connect to to do this work and practice? These are, you know, some of the questions that come to mind and, okay, what does mental health really look like in these communities? Um, and so with you, Maritza, having an amazing platform from your podcast, which you can more than likely share with everyone, um, but especially doing the work in the museum, the institution, right? Which is usually not the space where we we think these dialogues can happen. How has your work at PAM shaped the, the, the practice that you do? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is, is, is allowing, is, is giving yourself some grace, right? I think that using or thinking about museums as a place of respite from the rest of the world is a pretty healthy way of thinking about institutions. I think that you need to show up first and foremost as your authentic self. I think that that in and of itself solves a lot of problems. It filters out a lot of the people, the experiences, the things that don't align with you. So showing up authentically, I think is incredibly important. And as I said, giving yourself grace. I think that too often, especially in communities of color, we don't address issues of mental wellness. We don't want to talk about it because I, I think of, for example, my, my Nicaraguan roots, I, if I were to say, you know, I'm going to therapy or I want to go to therapy, they would kind of consider that the equivalent of me saying that I'm going to a loony bin. You know what I mean? Um, you, you have to kind of remember that you're coming from a particular culture that may or may not be there yet when it comes to understanding what some of these issues are and how they can be handled and tackled and faced. So I think in terms of my practice overall, it's really, really important for me to provide a place where people can self-reflect. I've always seen art, most importantly, first and foremost, really above anything else as a tool for self-reflection. When you think of art as a tool for self-reflection, it becomes a healthy relationship between you and the art. You know, I tell people all the time who come to Pam who maybe don't have too much of a background in modern and contemporary art, you know, I tell them don't approach this as, you know, as, as an academic thing. You know, if you don't have a background, you're not supposed to come in here and force yourself to learn everything. I think if you associate, you know, yourself with what you like, you know, just you just figure out, hey, you know, this painting really resonates with me or this series of photographs really resonate with me, then you're already using the art, I think, the way that it was intended to be, which is simply as a tool for you to have conversations with yourself and then in turn have conversations with others that are that allow us to relate to one another, understand each other. So art is really a catalyst, I think, for compassion, for understanding, for, um, for getting to know ourselves. So first and foremost, what I want is for people to feel like my practice and the stories that I tell, whether it be through the shows or through the talks or through my writing, is I want people to know that these are spaces where you're being invited in to converse with me, whether it's directly or indirectly so that you can get to know yourself, so that we can get to a point of understanding, so that art functions first and foremost as a human tool, more so than anything else. There, there, there's the academic element, of course, but I think thinking about art as that tool that you can use to improve yourself, your mental wellness, a respite from the chaos of the world, I think that that's a really, really, really good place to start, and institutions can provide that. Sorry for the delay and the muting, unmuting, but I know everyone was saying that some of the clicking was coming from my end and I think it's gone now. But um, I love that you said art as a, a tool and these institutions can support that. Um, one of the main things about, you know, looking at how people can work collaboratively in these spaces to provide these resources is, first of all, temperature checking, like, how are we connected to the neighborhoods and the communities we serve to know what exactly it is that they need? I think a lot of times when we're talking about mental health and offering resources, we, a lot of institutions, businesses, and organizations tend to offer a very 
homogenized approach to it versus really connecting with the communities. So what are some ways that you and your practice and the space that you're in have found um, tools to be successful in connecting with these communities? I think first and foremost, rest. I, I think that rest, which is a really radical idea for a lot of communities, we, you know, especially people of color, and I, I, as I mentioned, I think of myself and my Latin American background, you know, you're, you're taught from a very young age to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. The harder you work, the more successful you will be. These are things that I've unlearned because I, I know them not to be true. So I think that the most important thing is really emphasizing this idea of rest, of radical rest, and using rest as a way to kind of restore who you are. And, and let me be very clear. I don't believe that resting is, 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 is a function so that you can then get up and be more productive, okay? Rest is a divine right. It is a part of what you are allowed just from simply being alive. And I think that the more that we can incorporate that into our practices and the more that we can communicate that, the more people are going to feel like they can belong. You know, you don't always have to be go, go, go. Productivity is now so linked with our kind of inherent value, our inherent worth. And it's, and it's so fundamentally untrue. So I would say that, you know, if, if an exhibition or if a museum, an institution of any kind can provide that kind of respite in your life, if you're using the institution as as a moment of rest, you know, you're you're being a little radical in that moment. And I'm proud of you. <laughs> you know, it's it's so important to to kind of step back and, and to realign yourself with yourself. Um, I've been very inspired over the past um, couple of months by by the artist Marisol, who we now have a show that features her work um, at Pam. And one of the things that she said was, you know, the only way that I can create work is by spending hours of my day daydreaming and spending time with myself. If I'm spending time with myself, if I'm connecting with myself, then I can produce good work in the way that I want to produce good work, in the timing that I want to produce that good work. So owning that and being honest with what your, with, with what your needs are, that in and of itself, I think really pushes you in the right direction and, and, and shakes off a lot of the sort of nonsense that society constantly throws at us, you know, that we need to be productive all the time, that if you take a nap, God forbid, that you're just lazy, you know, all of this complete and utter nonsense, you know, thinking about rest as a radical act, I think is a really, really wonderful way to think about, um, you know, how you can realign with yourself and also thinking about rest as anything that you want it to be. Rest can be spending time, you know, in a museum In rest can be hanging out with your friend, rest can be sitting down reading a book, rest can be whatever you want it to be. So if, if there's a way for everyone to align with that, I think that you'll be headed um, in, in, in the right direction. I love that notion of radical rest. Like, can we just make that like a bar in itself? Because so oftentimes we are told we have to push through, like you said, giving ourselves permission to rest, to really connect to who we are. I, I just, I love that. Drop some bars in the comments, everyone, if you agree with what it's on that radical rest and restoration. I know personally, I went one time to this um, yoga event um, and it was pretty trendy, rooftop, Instagrammable, the whole vibes, right? But the biggest difference was instead of there being like the super quiet moments and silence, we listened to music. And I don't mean like the namaste, it was like Masego jazz, very earthy. And I just remember this feeling of I'm still doing all the positions, I'm doing all the breath work, but I get to listen to music that feels good to my soul. And it was such a liberating moment to have that, you know what I mean? To have that, I'm taught that yoga is supposed to only be this and only look like that and only be in these spaces. But this group found a way for that practice to be authentic to who we were. And I think it's so important that in the tone of radical restoration and this mindfulness of self-care and all the mental health things, authenticity has to shine through in that conversation as well. We have to be able to authentically and unapologetically see who we are, be who we are, 
and seek the healing that we need, right? Um, so I just, I just think it's spot on that it starts from within um, and then having that support, whether it's the institutions like the museums um, or your groups, your organizations, your community to provide the space for that work to happen. Right, exactly. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that, you know, showing up authentically, I think that's why I wanted to kind of start our conversation off with that idea of showing up authentically. Because when you do that, or at least my experience has been that when you do that, the right people stay and the right people that got to go, go. You know, it's like this very natural filter in your life. When you approach every situation as exactly who you are, you know, the people who want to be a part of that will remain and the people who don't won't and that is really um such an important thing for us to remember because regardless of which way you kind of slice the pie you're you're going to be free right and so showing up authentically is just a really easy way to find your people and find your practice and and redefine that practice for for yourself and you'd be surprised how many people you know align with with your views when you put yourself out there so you know, I'm always constantly kind of um, self-reflecting and thinking about what my practice is and what it can be and whether or not it's aligning with my values. That's always the question. Does this particular action align with my values? Is this something that I am doing out of fear or am I doing it out of love? If you ask yourself that question, you will, you'll find yourself getting out of situations that you probably shouldn't be in. Um, so showing up authentically, I think, is, is, is step one of, of really – any time that you're trying to think about how you can improve your mental health, how you can live a life that's more true to who you are. And, and, and remembering too, I think very, very important that happiness is an act, right? Happiness is something that you do. And you can only really do that if you're doing things that align with those values. So it's all interconnected. And that's why I always just encourage people to, to self-reflect. It's scary. I know that. Because when you self-reflect, you come across all sorts of feelings that you probably don't want to, <laughs> to think about and things that, you know, make you feel a little bit insecure or make you feel like, you know, you're tackling these demons. But when you do, there's a freedom in that. And you're no longer shackled by that. You're no longer shackled by your past. You're no longer thinking about the things that, that at one point hurt you. You now have a very different perspective, a perspective on what those things are. And perspective really is the gift, I think. You know, regardless of what happens in your life, you take that perspective with you and apply it as you go. And that's why, you know, as I said, showing up authentically allows for all of those things to to align. I love that. So, Marissa, I have to ask you for an audience, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. This is this is an engagement, right? We're, we're all part of this dialogue and um, we're all trying to be free, get free, right? In, in our mindful practice of what self-care um, looks like for us authentically, right? Um, what, it's a, what would be some advice you would give to someone who maybe has an idea and they want to bring um, this idea of creating the space or an event or practice? How do they get connected to say, for example, a larger institution or somewhere, like how do they get on the radar of these spaces to show that there's a need for this in the community? And we do want it created, but we also want to be the ones to lead what that looks like. How, how does that look for people who want to get connected? I mean, I think first and foremost, regardless of who you're representing, right, whether I'm having a conversation with you right now representing myself or representing Pam, um, you know, you have to walk the walk. And when you do that, people notice what you're about. They know what your mission and vision is. And that brings forth, I think, a lot of people who are interested in the same things, right? So that's where you kind of meet your, you meet your group. But I would say that the most important thing is, is really not to be afraid of, of failure. You know, if you're going to try something new, if you're going to create an event, if you're trying to open a space, if you're trying to connect with other people, you know, don't be afraid of it maybe not working out or you not getting the attendance that you wanted or you not getting the result that you were initially looking for because it's still going to teach you how to get there, you know? So it's fear of failure 
I think has killed more dreams than than anything else, right? Because we, we stop ourselves before we even give ourselves a chance to try. So I would say that if you're trying to connect with people, find find people that you know are walking that walk, right? That that their practice aligns with your values. I'm always welcoming people to message me, email me if there's anything that they want to collaborate on, because I try and put it out there into the world who I am, what I do, what I think is important, what my values are. And that has helped me, you know, that's, that's really why we're chatting today, right? Because we were able to connect on, on that level, you know, we have some shared values, and we wanted to have this conversation. So that's really important is putting that kind of information out there, putting yourself out there without any sort of fear of rejection or failure, because you will surround yourself with the right people, and you will be able to kind of conduct those projects that, that you're passionate about and that are important to you. So my advice is don't be afraid to, to, to try, you know, to make those connections, to work with an institution, to put yourself out there, because I think at that point, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of already halfway there. And that's further than where you were yesterday. I love that. Look, my drop moment, right? Radical restoration, authentic perspective. I see all the words um, popping up in the chat. Um, as I mentioned, if anyone has any questions um, for Maritza or myself with the Comfy Art Space, um, feel free to drop them in there. But Maritza, in the meantime, how can people still stay connected to you? Know what, what, what do you have in the works? Tell us a little bit what, about what you have going on. It's been, it's been a couple of months. One of the most important passions I'm part of now is the podcast. It's called Boring for People podcast and program um, and available for all podcasts are available and this is really a passion project that stemmed from me and my best friend Alexa who is uh, an incredible wine connoisseur and I as some of you may or may not know I'm, I'm quite a reader so what we decided to do was create a podcast where we have conversations about books and we pair them with a particular wine um it could be paired because of the theme or the location or you know all sorts of different connections um arise but we use the book really more as a catalyst for conversation which is what we were discussing earlier is using art as a catalyst for conversation for understanding each other and we always really encourage people to email us, to message us, to tell us what they think, if they've read the book, if the conversation resonated with them. We try not to put spoilers out there so that people um, maybe want to read the book after the conversation, but it's really more important for us to just use the themes as, as ways for us to connect, you know, to connect with other people who might feel the same way or who might, you know, who that book maybe resonated with. So that's probably one of the most important projects that I've ever been a part of because it stemmed 150 percent from love of each other me and alexa love of our you know our hobbies books and wine you know it stemmed from a place of like just pure goodness which is why i think it's good you know because it, it it's it's an extension of the best that me and her have to offer and in terms of pam we have quite a few um quite a few projects in the works now that the pandemic has has chilled out and allowed us to kind of um, use the exhibition grid in a more um, in a more active way, which is exciting. So I do have an incredible show opening uh, next year in May, a local Miami artist. So you were talking about how Comfy Art is really interested in nurturing um, artists and artistic spaces in Atlanta locally. Well, we're trying to do that. So a really incredible show opening in May of next year with a local artist and um and we have a great basel show opening up in just a couple of months in november so we're very busy we're very 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 busy but um i use busy this time in a very positive way you know um we have a lot of projects going on that will touch i think many people and that will allow for people to engage with me engage with the podcast engage with the museum and that's that's really what we're all about love it love it so much in store excited for the podcast everyone online be sure to follow maritza check out the podcast get in read those books right that, that's a form of self-care too right having those moments um but also engage with all of the amazing things that um the perez museum's rolling out in miami um and as for us here at comfy art um 
locked and loaded as well as i mentioned every wednesday right here on instagram live with better sound apologies <laughs> we will be having um at noon eastern standard time right here on comfy arts instagram live we'll be doing a weekly um interview with with people that we really feel honor the space that they're in they support cre artists and creatives and when we talk about mental health it's not just a, a once a month thing they're out there doing the practice because they live it authentically so tune in every wednesday right here um to check out the rest of our speakers um and as well as comfy art i mean we just have a lot of things we are ramping up our new class of design and muse that's our year-long program where we collaborate with um, visual artists on exclusive brand collaboration through Comfy Art. They create a bunch of amazing products um, that's sold within our e-commerce platform, which is one of our four pillars, as well as a lot of partnerships with different brands and nonprofits. So we're excited that that's ramping up. We'll be at CultureCon this weekend. So anyone in Atlanta, pull up on us. Um, Comfy Art will definitely be at CultureCon. Stop by our booth, learn more about our work um, and see some of the work in action. Um, and we're just excited. We're excited to be here. We're excited to be present. Um, if you haven't already, follow us on Comfy Art. Visit us on our website. And of course, join our Comfy community. Over 15,000 people just really ready to do this work. Um, so listen, Marissa, thank you. We can go on and on. Um, and this is the first of many of these dialogues. We just, we love the work that you're doing in Miami. Um, and we want to see the continued growth for it. Um, everyone, thank you for showing up. Thank you for your heartfelt comments. And I just want to do one thing before we go. Let's just breathe. Thank you so much for honoring your time, your space, and being with us. Have a good day. Have a good week, folks. Marissa, all love. It was a Take pleasure. care. I'm always here, ready to connect. Love it, love it. Take care, everyone. Bye.